Hi guys! So, this week I'm working on a piece of Professor Layton fan art. Well, it's more actually geared towards the um, Layton Mystery Detective Agency anime, but you know, I still count that as just being Professor Layton. I've been watching the anime a lot recently and I'm really enjoying it, so I came up with the idea to do some, some fancy little fan art. I sketched it originally traditionally, and then I took a photo and edited, edited it a little bit. And then I just put it into Clip Studio and got to work doing the line art and coloring and everything. I wound up spending way longer on this piece than I usually would on something like this, just because I wasn't really paying attention too much while I was working on it. I was watching some friends do some game live streaming, and then the next day that I was working on it, it was my birthday, so I was pretty preoccupied then too, but it was a lot of fun, and I'm really happy with how it came out. You can tell I got a bit lazy with it, especially whenever I got to the coloring, just because I actually got a photo from, I think someone's like, Twitter or something, I don't know, I googled it and grabbed the first one that had the characters I needed in it, and I just, I color picked everything, which normally I wouldn't do, but sometimes I teaches you a lot, so sometimes color picking is fun. I learned that in the anime they use way more saturated of colors than I ever would have and way darker of colors. It really surprised me because when I started laying them down I was looking at it thinking, this isn't gonna look right, what did I do wrong? But by the time I laid everything down it actually looks pretty nice. I'm definitely not gonna be using that saturated of colors in my own stuff very often, but it was fun to try it at least for one piece. And I'm going to apologize again because I missed uploading last week because I wound up having a crazy busy week. This week has also been super busy and I'm not even being able to post the video that I wanted to. For the past couple weeks I've been working on a video about lettering comics and stuff like that and I'm really excited to share that video but it is taking way longer to make than I anticipated. So... That's... that's a thing. There are some bits on this piece that turned out a bit funky, but I was just trying to do a quick piece of fan art to sort of cool down from comic work, because I've been experiencing a crazy ton of burnout in the past few months, and this is probably the most intense art block that I've ever had, because it feels like it's going away, and then it comes right back, so... that's a bit... It. it was really weird doing this piece actually because I haven't drawn a lot of these characters before. Like, I've drawn Professor Layton before and I've drawn Luke before, but I've not drawn adult Luke. So I had to learn how to draw him for this piece, kinda. And I sort of stuck more to the original version of Professor Layton, because I know that in all the Catriel Layton stuff, he looks just a little bit different. Like there's been a there's been a subtle art style change. It makes everything look a bit more soft and cutesy almost. Like the Layton style has always been really, really cute. But I think they've sort of gone more towards the cute, even. <laughs> I think they figured out that they have a lot of a lot of female audience members, so they try to appeal to them more. I had a lot of fun doing the little flare for the relic that Catriel is holding. Also, I will note that I took a lot of creative liberties in some of these places, like. You know, I'm not gonna try to give spoilers or anything, but I'll say that the relics are not that size at all. <laughs> like, Catriel wouldn't be able to hold one like that, according to what we know at this point in the anime. And then also, she has never, like, held a relic. <laughs> so, I mean, I just took some creative liberty based off the fact that, you know, they hinted at that, or said that, relics sort of point towards each other whenever they're away from each other. So I thought the idea of, at least my original thought for the piece, is that Catriel is following all the clues with the relics and getting closer and closer to finding her father. And so that's kind of it. 
was originally going to have a giant relic behind everyone, one that took up like half the page, but I decided against it and instead I just added in the other of the relics behind them so that there was six there and then Catriel was holding the seventh. And see, so here's me coloring, and I mostly use the paint bucket tool, which I would highly recommend against doing, but I was kind of not thinking, so I didn't feel like painting in and doing all the color lining carefully. So, probably will never print this piece, but if I did, I would probably have to go in and do a few tweaks so there wouldn't be weird artifacting and stuff. Clip Studio's paint bucket is a lot better than most other programs I've used though, so it wouldn't be too terrible and I could probably just expand some of the color areas a little bit, but definitely not the brightest idea on my part to just go using the paint bucket for everything. It was really weird just coloring with such rich colors, because I usually try to stay really light so that things print better, because I've found that the lighter you make your colors, the better they print. But, you know, as I said earlier, experiments and saturation were very fun to do. I'm gonna try to get a Christmas video out at some point, but like I was saying, things have wound up being way busier than I anticipated, so that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> But I will try my best, and I might wind up doing some Christmassy art after Christmas and sharing it, because I am like that, and my family sometimes will do like second Christmas and stuff. I was originally planning on making all the line art like dark browns and stuff like that to give it a softer look, but I kind of liked the clean look of the black instead, so I stuck with that. But for the relics, I went ahead and I made their line art lighter so that it looks more like how they do in the anime. And then also with Catriel's eyes, because, you know, she doesn't have any black in her iris or pupil. I said iris and then I started thinking of Diabolical Box and now I'm sad. <laughs> I had so much fun with this piece. I keep saying that over and over again, but honestly, I just, I really, really had a lot of fun. I, I had some trouble coloring the relics and so they don't, I'd say they're one of the pieces of this drawing that just don't look quite right, but I wasn't sure entirely how to fix them at the time, which in hindsight, they were a lot easier to fix than I really realized. But whatever, I think they still look kind of nice. I think they looked a lot better once I started adding the glow over them. I mean, I might have overdone it in a few parts, but not terribly so. I did do some tweaks on this after I finished recording, like you will see at the end that I saved Professor Layton and Luke onto their own layers and exported those, and I exported them at full opacity, and then I brought them back into the art and lowered the opacity a bit so that you would know that they're not just like floating heads and shoulders right behind Catriel and Noah, but um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that effect came out. There's, there's some weird stuff going on with the shading on Professor Layton art, on Professor Layton's arm. I having a hard time talking today guys I'm tired <laughs> but I was I was trying to shade his arm properly but then this weird thing happened once I had already saved the finished piece and I was decided that I was done because I don't like to go in and continue tweaking pieces once they're done if they're done I very very rarely go in and change stuff unless there's a really glaring issue and on his arm, the shading almost made it look like part of Luke's hair was showing through behind him or something. I don't know how to explain it, but it just, it doesn't look quite right. And it's not terrible, but it bothers me just a little bit. <laughs> I apologize that I didn't record the traditional sketching, but I wasn't even planning on recording the digital portion of this when I started. So, at least I recorded what I did. It was a lot of fun. I wound up with like over a hundred layers on this piece, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Which that's partially due to that I did the line art all in 
the same piece as well as the coloring. And when I do line art, I basically put everything on its own layer so that I can change it as much as possible. The shading was a lot of fun also because I, I was originally planning on doing like softer, more pencil-y, sketchy looking shading, but then I went with cell shading. And I very rarely do that in my own work, so it was a lot of fun to experiment with. It doesn't look entirely right because like I said, I don't do cell shading much, but it was still fun. And I added some glow dodge on their hair, just Catriel and Noah's, not anyone else's. Just for a little bit more effect, because I liked the flat look, but I felt like it was almost too flat. That's one of the perks of not doing the stuff for the animation. After all, you get to add in more detail than the animators would, because they have to do everything frame by frame. So... <laughs> Anyways, that brings us about to the end of the time lapse here, and I hope that you enjoyed seeing it, and I hope to see you next time. God bless!